This video is about Indian English and this is the first time ever that I've used ChatGPT to put together an episode. Discover the examples of Indian English that ChatGPT came up with and of course my take on them as well. Do keep watching but first please subscribe to The English Nut on Facebook, YouTube and Instagram. Thank you. For this episode of The English Nut, I decided to consult ChatGPT. As you probably know, ChatGPT is an AI chatbot that uses natural language processing to answer your questions in text form. AI, of course, stands for Artificial Intelligence. What I asked ChatGPT was to give me examples of Indian English. ChatGPT started by defining Indian English as a variety of English spoken in India that incorporates elements of Indian languages and cultural influences. The following are some of the examples that ChatGPT gave me. You will perhaps be surprised to learn that these phrases are not used by English speakers in other parts of the world. In fact, if you use them while speaking to people who are not from the Indian subcontinent, you might find them scratching their heads with incomprehension. Please do the needful. This is a phrase we use in India to request someone to take necessary action on something. It is especially used when dealing with bureaucracy. When someone writes a letter to their bank, for example, asking them to transfer their account from one branch to another, they end the letter with, please do the needful. This phrase used to be used in Britain till the Victorian period, but now it is all but forgotten there. Instead of this phrase, you could say, please help me with this matter. I will come just now. In standard English, just now means a short time ago, past tense. But in Indian English, it is often used to mean soon, future tense. If you want to rephrase the sentence in standard English, you may say, I will come right away. I am going to my native place. Native place is an Indian invention. When someone is going to their hometown or the village they originally come from, they say, I am going to my native place. In standard English, you would say, I am going to my hometown or I am going to my village. Passing out of college. In standard English, this would be graduating from college. If you ask someone from Britain or America which year they passed out, they would be confused because for them, passing out means fainting. Kindly adjust. This is an Indian English phrase used to politely ask someone to accommodate to or make adjustments in a situation. It sounds quaint to a speaker of standard English. I don't know if there's an exact equivalent of the phrase in standard English, but let me attempt an example. If the air conditioning is not working in a hotel lobby, the management might say, Please bear with us while we get it repaired. Here, bear with us is the equivalent of kindly adjust. Prepone the meeting. Prepone is a great Indian invention. It is used as the opposite of postpone. But in standard English, it would be bring forward or advance or reschedule to an earlier time. I think prepone is a more convenient word to use, but it has not yet caught on in the rest of the world. Do note that prepone and other Indian English words have found their way into the dictionary, but they are specifically labeled as Indian English. Perhaps one day the rest of the world will also embrace these terms. We will discuss and revert back to you. I often see this in emails, but revert actually means turn into or turn back into. It does not mean reply or respond. I would avoid using revert in this context. The way I would use revert is to say something like ice reverts to water when it melts. Also, discuss is a transitive verb and it requires an object. So you need to write something like discuss it and never say discuss about. You discuss something, you don't discuss about something. I have taken a ticket. According to ChatGPT, Indians commonly say taken a ticket instead of bought a ticket. Honestly, I've never heard anyone say this, have you? Give a missed call. Missed call is another convenient invention of Indian English. It's a call you make and purposely disconnect before the other person answers. It is often used to indicate that you want the other person to call you back. 
In fact, I've come across many ads that instruct you to give a missed call to a number to avail of a particular service. Do one thing. This is a literal translation of Ek Kaam Karo. You use it when instructing someone to do something. There's no exact equivalent in standard English. Instead, you could simply start your sentence with Could you please show me once? This example was not given by ChatGPT, but I've often come across this usage of once. Here once is literally translated from Ek Bar. I've also heard people say, can you check once? The word once is perhaps used to make your request more emphatic, but it doesn't really work in English. To convert the sentence into standard English, simply drop the word once or replace it with please. It's interesting to note that while using once like this doesn't make sense in English, its equivalents do make sense in German, Dutch, Chinese and other languages. My neighbor is foreign returned. This example of Indian English is also not supplied by ChatGPT. I came across it on the British Council website. Of course, we've all probably heard it before. It relates to the Indian belief that when someone has studied or worked abroad, their job prospects improve in India. And going by the matrimonial columns, their marriage prospects improve as well. I belong to Kolkata. This is the last example of Indian English I'm going to cover today. In India, we often hear people say things like, I belong to Mumbai or I belong to Patna, when they want to say that that's the place they come from. In other English speaking countries, people would say, I'm from Sydney or I'm from Manchester. ChatGPT concluded its answer by saying, these examples illustrate some of the unique vocabulary, expressions and sentence structures that are commonly found in Indian English, reflecting the influence of Indian languages and cultural nuances on the English language in India. Do you know any other examples of Indian English? Do write them in the comments section. I'm the English Nut. Bye for now.